Hey guys, so if you've been paying attention to the camera or smartphone market in the last several years, you'll know that camera megapixels are a big talking point in marketing. And I guess I wanted to talk about are megapixels the most important thing? Obviously they're not, but what makes a lower megapixel count camera may be better than even a higher megapixel type camera. If you have a smartphone, for example, that has the same number of megapixels as a DSLR, why would you ever get the DSLR? What are the advantages? So that's really the main point I'm gonna talk about in this video. Now, as I just mentioned, megapixels are not the whole story. In fact, in some cases, having more megapixels can actually make image quality worse. Megapixels is just the resolution of the image, but you also have to look at the quality of the image itself. And the quality of the image, specifically in regards to low light and noise throughout the image, really comes down to the size of the individual pixels on the sensor. So you can imagine that if you have two equally sized sensors, one has a lot of megapixels and one has fewer, the one with a lot of megapixels is going to have smaller individual pixels, so it will be able to take a higher resolution image, but the sensor with fewer megapixels is going to have larger individual pixels on the sensor for each pixel. And a larger area for each pixel to capture light means better image quality, and it can be more sensitive without having a lot of noise on the pixel. So that's why if you see a lot of small censored cameras for phones, they typically have a lot of noise if you go anywhere above the lowest ISO, and if it doesn't, then it means that there was probably a lot of noise reduction processing going on. And there are a lot of different size sensors you can get. There's APS-C, then there's full frame, and camera phones are very, very small. You can go up to even medium format, which are very expensive, but they have much larger individual pixels, and those are very professional. So you can imagine even if you have a 20 megapixel cell phone camera with a tiny little sensor, and they're all packed in, and then a 20 megapixel DSLR with a full frame sensor, which is much, much larger, the performance on the DSLR is generally going to be much better. Now, of course, there are other things that affect the performance besides just the sensor size, such as the processor used to process out some noise and process the image in camera. So if you have a DSLR, a modern DSLR, like a Digic uh, 5 Plus sensor processor, that's going to be able to process the image at a higher quality and reduce the noise much better than say something that's just slapped into a phone. And that's also because you have a lot more room in a DSLR to put all that extra technology. And this is also the same explanation for why you might see a medium format camera that costs $10,000 and it shoots about 50 megapixels. And then you look at something like the Canon 5DX, which shoots around 50 megapixels and you say, well, this is the same number of megapixels and they're, they're both really high-end cameras. What's so much better for the medium format that's $10,000. Well, it's gonna have much larger pixels, you're gonna have much less noise, even at higher ISOs, and that's really why like top-tier professional photographers are gonna be using medium format. Now, granted, cell phone cameras have come a long way, and in fact, you might be able to get better performance out of a modern cell phone camera than you would a really old first-generation digital DSLR. And that's just the cell phone processing power has evolved so much over the years. However, in general, a similar aged sensor on a camera is never going to be able to perform up to the standard as a modern DSLR just because of the size. It's an inherent limitation. But anyway, that's pretty much all there is in a nutshell, and if you guys ever wondered about this, hopefully I satisfied your curiosity. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to destroy that like button and let me know in the comments what you thought. Of course, I'm always looking for feedback and suggestions. If you have anything to talk about, I'll definitely be looking down there. If you want to continue watching, I've got some other videos on the right hand side that you can just click on or look in the description for the same link, like if you're on a phone. And if you want to subscribe, I make new videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so I think it should be worth it. So thanks for watching, guys. I look forward to hearing from you either in the comments section or on Twitter. So thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Have a good one.